Hey guys, in this video, let's discuss how you can install and configure PacketBeat to monitor network traffic between your applications. PacketBeat is a real-time network packet analyzer that you can use with Elasticsearch to provide an application monitoring and performance analytics system. It works by capturing the network traffic between application servers and it decodes the application layer protocols such as HTTP, MySQL, etc. You can deploy PacketBeat on the same server as your applications reside on or on its own server. In a cloud environment, because the underlying network devices are not exposed to you, it's hard to deploy PacketBeat on its own server. So in this demo, we will deploy PacketBeat on our web server and monitor our HTTP traffic using PacketBeat. There are four steps to deploy PacketBeat. First, we'll install PacketBeat. Second, we'll configure PacketBeat and configure traffic sniffer and network flows for our PacketBeat monitoring. Third, we'll configure metric beat to monitor packet beat. And finally, we'll start and enable packet beat. So let's move on to our lab system. Now here on the left hand side, I've got the instructions to install and configure packet beat on web server. And on the right hand side, I've got my SSH connection into my web server one. Now first, let's install packet beat. So we can type in sudo apt-get install packet beat and hit enter. Now once packet beat is installed, we can start configuring it. To do that, let's first cd into slash etc slash packet beat. And here, if I do an ls, you'll see that I've got my packet beat dot reference file, which I can reference when I'm configuring my packet beat installation. And I've got the configuration file, which is packet beat dot yaml. So let's do sudo nano packet beat dot yaml. Now in this file, the first thing I have to configure is the network interface from which I want to sniff the network data from. On Linux machines, this can have a value of any, which means it will sniff network traffic from all connected interfaces, or you can specify a particular network interface to only target network traffic on that interface. Now we'll leave it as default any. Next on packet beat, flows are enabled by default. To disable flows, you can set enabled as false, in flow configuration to disable it but we'll leave it as enabled and now it's time to configure the protocols for which we want to monitor network flows now this is under packetbeat.protocols now here we will monitor network flows for icmp dhcp v4 dns and http so to disable the rest of the flows we'll have to comment them out i'll do that now now one thing to note is that this ports field is used to configure the ports for which you want to monitor the flow information for. Now your web server might be running on a port that's different from one of these default ports. For example, your web server might be running on let's say port 8001. Now to monitor flow for your web server in that scenario, what you'll have to do is either come in here and add your specific port like this and also delete the rest of them. Now, since we are running on port 80, what I'll do is I'll remove all the other ports and I'll now move on to the next section, which is general. Here, I'll uncomment tags and I'll keep the tag web tier. Now, after this, let's set up some dashboards. So, we'll configure setup.dashboards.enabled as true. So, let me just first uncomment this and set this to true. This will enable default dashboards for packet beat on our Kibana instance. Now after that, we'll have to uncomment the host section for Kibana and correct the URL. This will be the internal IP address of our Kibana instance. So 192.168.1.34. Now after that, let's move on to output. Under output, the first thing we have to do is correct the URL for my elastic output section so 192.168.1.34 which is internal ip of my elk instance next under protocol let's configure the protocol to be http now after this we have to set up authentication so i'll enter elastic user and its password now next let's set up logging i'll uncomment logging level but leave it as default debug I'll also uncomment logging selectors, but leave it as default star, which means all selectors. 
Now to set login to a file, I'll need to copy this configuration and paste it here. Now what this configuration does is it first enables logging to be sent to a file. Then we specify the parameters for the file that logging needs to go to. For example, the path, name of the file, number of files to keep and the permissions on that file. Now after this, let's set up HTTP monitoring through metric read. So I'll copy these two settings and paste it here. Now the first setting enables HTTP monitoring and the second setting tells packet beat which port it needs to send its monitoring data to. Now what we'll do is we'll configure this port in our beat expect file under metric beat. So let's first save this file. Now after this let's edit our beat expect file so sudo nano slash etc slash metric beat slash modules dot d and beat expect now in this file under host section we have to add the url for our packet beat monitoring so i'll put a comma space double quotes and http localhost and the port is 5070 now i can save this now after this let's first check that metric beat is running so sudo systemctl status metric beat now this is running now let's start our packet beat instance so sudo systemctl start packet beat and hit enter now let's do a status on packet beat so sudo systemctl status packet beat it's running now let's move on to kibana ui to look at some of the default dashboards that are created by packet beat now from home page of my kibana ui i'll first go to the menu and I'll go to stack monitoring. Now here I'll click on demo ELK and I'll go to the section for beats and I can see that there's a beat called packet beat so I can click on beats and let's click on web server one which has live packet beat and you can see that we've started receiving some data through our packet beat instance. Now to actually look at some dashboards that have been created by packet beat for us in our Kibana UI, let's go to menu and dashboards. And here let's type in packet beat. And then let's click on the dashboard that says packet beat HTTP ECS. Now here, this dashboard gives you all the HTTP transactions. For example, number of transactions, status codes, error codes, top 10 HTTP requests, etc. Likewise, you can also look at network flows and here you can see connections over time, top hosts creating traffic, top hosts receiving traffic, network traffic between hosts. Under DNS overview, you can get some DNS related data. For example, DNS query summaries, DNS requests over time, the question types, DNS client and server IPs, top 10 questions for DNS, now next, you can also look at DHCP transactions. Now, here you can see NAC and decline counts, transaction count, client counts, data transfer, message type, message type over time. Now this is the overview dashboard. You can look at different clients that are trying to access your websites, DNS transactions, HTTP transactions, transaction types, response over time, response time percentiles, error versus successful transactions, error counts, latency, etc. Now what I want you to do after this is I want you to deploy packet beat on web server 2. With this, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.